Coach? No, but how about questions? Questions. There in the back, and then Sam will get you next. Coach, it seemed like you struggled a little bit in the beginning there. Do you feel like that was the same team that stepped out onto the field last week, and how did you make your adjustments as the game went on? Well, I think, uh, number one, um, people get a little bit spoiled with how we've played offense around here. And if we don't score right off the bat, then um, the sky is falling. So, uh, you know, we'd like to score every time the, uh, the first series of every game. But, uh, um, you know, fortunately, I think our percentage is high enough that, uh, um, you know, people get frustrated and, and our team sometimes starts pressing a little bit. But, you know what, that's, that's football. You know, there's a, there's a combination of things that happen. I talk about third down <clears throat> a lot. You know, we had some drops early. Uh, we only had the ball nine and a half minutes in the first half. And as, as quick as I was to complain about that, we had it less in the second half. But uh, to have the, the ball um, 16 minutes and score 38 points, you, I don't, I'm not going to complain about that. Down front here, Sam. Kevin, how uh, concerned with you were the field conditions and how did they impact the game? You know, I don't know how much they impacted the game. I, you know, that was, you know, everybody, you know, we, we uh, um, got a lot of rain last night. I don't know how much. Some people say four inches. Some people say seven inches. And you never know uh, with a new surface what it was going to be like, uh, even one that had been down for a long time with the amount of rain that we had. So um, the good news was it, it, it didn't rain very much all day today. So... Um, where it was, you know, it could have been worse if it was raining. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a new field, but, um, you know, we, we've been on it. And both teams played on it. So, you know, that, that's just where it was. It was something we kept an eye on. And, and uh, um, you know, if, if we thought it was going to be a, 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 a really, really big is issue, then, you know, that there would have been decisions made not by – necessarily by me, but in with conjunction with a lot of other people, that uh, things would change. You mean in terms of continuing to play? Yeah, or playing. And uh, quickly, uh, Speedy Noel saw him get carted off. What's the other word on him? Um, we'll see. David Nuno. Kevin, can you talk a little bit about the way you guys came out in the second half offensively, that first drive? Yeah, you know, it's um, – you know, we we didn't have the ball very much um, in the first half. I think um, we sat down and talked about what we didn't do well in the first half with our guys. We were very the coaches were very positive at halftime. With we, you know, we were close. We had some drop balls. We had a guy go the wrong way early in the running game, and <clears throat> so you know, I thought you know, from my perspective as a coach, to have that kind of communication at halftime. And then uh, guys come back out and execute it and go down the field in the custom that um, – in the fashion that people are accustomed to, uh, you know, it, it was – that was good. You know, that was a good – the third quarter was the difference for our football team in this game um, from an offensive and defensive standpoint. So that means, yeah, coaches were, were, were coaching and, and uh, players were listening. And executing, and, and uh, we had a number of guys that were were uh, were accepted that challenge at halftime. And I think you saw that in the third quarter. Go Christy, and then Gabe. Can you talk about what Kenny Hill did tonight? And he seemed to be really affected by the first drive and it not going the way he wanted to be. He kept bringing it up. Can you kind of touch on that too? Yeah, I, I think his demeanor uh, is a lot different than a lot of people's demeanor. You know, I've said that in, in Columbia. I think that helps him. Uh, where he doesn't, he's not really too high or too low, and, and uh, he's always a positive guy, and, and he's not pressing. And we had some guys who, who started to press a little bit, I think. And uh, um, when things don't go as scripted uh, and, and don't go that way, I think that's good for your team, particularly early. Um, and, and to be able to uh, win in the fashion we did and not play as well right off the bat, I think. Uh, 
yeah, there's some negatives to that, but there's some positives too. And, you know, like I, I just told these guys, I said, you know, you're in the, this locker room and um, guys are pretty hard on themselves, which is, that's a good thing uh, for me as a coach because I don't know that it's always been like that here. Um, but my message tonight was that, you know, guys weren't very happy with how they played. Rice had something to do with that, had a great plan. Uh, but, the, you know, our, our guys were kind of ho-hum in the locker room after it and pretty hard on themselves, not each other, but themselves and their performance. And and that's good you know, when you get to that point, uh, really, as a team, because there's a lot of people who would have liked to have won 38-10 to 10 today and not be happy with, with how they played. Go down front, Gabe, and then Zach. Coach, certainly one of the bright spots, Miles Garrett. He had two and a half sacks. He's got five and a half on the year, and I think that's like two and a half shy of the SEC freshman record through three games. Could you talk about his consistent effort getting better game to game? Yeah, he's getting doubled. He's getting uh, protection slid to him. He's getting the back on him, you know, already, and, and that's good. And AC just handed me something. He's tied the school record for quarterback sacks by a freshman. Five and a half. We, we've only played three games. And he's tied that. The other two guys uh, are Sam Adams and Demontre Moore. He tied. So, future's bright for that young man, I would guess, <laughs> since those other two guys, uh, one's, still, one's playing and one played a long time. And, and uh, so, you know, three games in, he's tied that freshman record. So, he's, he continues to get better. And, and what he's finding out, too, is now people have recognized that and the protections are changing. And... You know, we're going to have to move him around a little bit to help him. But uh, um, uh, he is definitely a, a guy that uh, really, really creates some havoc, and, and, and particularly in, in, in passing situations and, and, and forcing some, you know, uh, protection changes and some double teams and things like that. And I think he, he, he got a little frustrated tonight with the protection you know, seeing some things he hadn't seen. And then towards the end of the game, you know, he, he kind of figured that out. And that's that's part of a young guy, part of a, a young pass rusher. And that's going to continue the rest of the year. Nobody's just going to single him up. And, you know, you got five and a half sacks in three games. You know, he's got more sacks right now and, and by game three than we had all year last year as a defense. So, you know, I don't know what else I can say, but he's, he's doing a good job. <laughs> Zach? Coach, you mentioned Miles, uh, of course, but what other things really stood out to you tonight about the defense's performance? Well, you know, the fact that uh, the scoreboard, you know, uh, 10 points, it was – that's – that's it's pretty good. You know, if we can keep our point totals down, we gave up some yards. We gave up a lot of yards at, at, at times. And, you know, the time of possession deal is, is still big, third down. You know, we, we're not nearly where we have been the last two weeks on third down. Um, and, uh, you know, I think their quarterback uh, played very, very well, particularly in the first half, extending drives, improvising, uh, not just, you know, it wasn't just the option. It was the drop back and uh, take off and run around and throw balls or, or run and, and get first downs and created some havoc for us. So, um you know, there's, there's, there's. I, I thought um, Jackson played very, very well tonight. Their quarterback, and and uh, that was something that we hadn't really, you know, seen a whole lot of of a guy that was going to run around and do that. So you know, that that's going to help us, I think, down the road. Uh, that's something that we've got to address, and, and our guys have to see and, and feel. And um, but you know, the, the point total is is the ultimate the ultimate challenge for the defense and so you know giving up a touchdown a field goal is um with that many yards is still pretty good we'll go middle back mike then daryl and then christy here coach it seemed that uh the defense was it didn't they weren't as well with wrapping up and tackling in this game did, did you see that and uh and how could they get better just in the next coming weeks um, tackling. Daryl? Coach, can you talk about the play right before the end of the first half on the field goal that was missed and the return and the penalty and all that? Yeah. Um, you know, it was a uh, 
situation where we call timeout and we put Ricky in. Uh, the, the design of, of the block is to get a lot of push with the defensive line. And obviously Ricky's a big athletic guy and, and he becomes our, our jumper uh, in those situations, particularly on longer field goals because the trajectory is lower. And uh, it gives him an opportunity with, with push for him to get up in the line of scrimmage and jump. And I don't know if he's the guy who blocked it. Yes. There's a lot of hands up in there. Um, and you know, a lot of things happen right after that. You know, we, we coach our team uh, that if the ball's blocked and it goes behind the line, I mean, on the offensive side of the line of scrimmage, then we will pick it up, scoop, and try to score. If the ball is blocked – and it goes on our side of the line of scrimmage, then we leave it alone because there's only bad things that can happen unless you got a guy like Armani Watts who has never played and been on the field goal block team. We're coaching everybody on there, but we had some other guys in there. So, you know, here, here's another thing that you think you cover with everybody and a guy who is playing hard. Armani, if you, it, you're never going to accuse him of not playing hard. So, you know, everybody's happy. Field goal block, we, we've been coached, you let it go. All right, so we're getting ready to exchange and get our guys on the field for offense and defense runs off. And we look up and here comes 23 running like a madman back to our own, I don't know where the ball was, the 10? It was wow. deep, five. And, and, and the crowd's going nuts and we're all screaming, no, no. And he picks it up, no. And and uh, and then he starts heading for our sideline, and you know then these guys start blocking, and we got guys. Some guys are on the field, some guys are running off. It was just a, 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 I guess you know I was a little bit upset by the whole thing, but but it was the right call by the official, and uh, it was a, another one of those things as a learning experience for a young player that you know we we we've got some signs around here, you know play hard play smart and be physical and that was a great individual effort but but not the smartest effort you know out of that and you know he's just trying to make a play but uh, I think he learned from that and it's what he you know I went over and talked to him hey, it's a great play but you gotta understand that uh, what what's what the expectations are there we get the ball right there anyway um, we have another situation where just like Auburn against Alabama where we'll put uh, and insert a returner in that situation for a long field goal and, and set up a return. Um, but that's uh, I've been around 20-some years. I've, I've never seen that happen. And then to have the points taken off the board because of people on the field and things like that, you know, it's it was just a, a really bizarre ending to the first half. And so, it's, you know, hopefully we won't see anything like that again. But – Great effort by, by Armani, but another learning situation for, for a young player that uh, is, is just out there just trying to, trying to do the best he can and trying to win games. Christy, wrap us up. Can you, can you talk about having Carson back and what he did for your team tonight? Uh, Trey was, uh, was very, very, very good. You know, I think uh, you know, he, he had that uh, like a turf toe, uh, which is really, really painful, particularly for a running back and, and – uh, um, I think he, you know, he was really physical when he ran the ball. Um, they they loaded things up in front and, and uh, um, really slanted, moved, uh, got safeties down in there, and that's why you saw the the deep balls that we threw. And Kenny probably said it; he needs to work on the deep ball. He throws a, a really good deep ball. Uh, when when you have a game plan that's like that, and you know, we ran it into some loaded boxes, and the backs knew that, and they were still able to execute and get yards, which a bigger back can do. That's where Trey comes in. So, you know, that takes time, and that set up some other things when, when there are that many people there. That's why you saw so many deep attempts, uh, just to, to, to uh, because there's space back there. We missed a couple of those. Um, but but uh, in order to be able to do that, I think the, the big thing is, what is he, 11 for 66, you know, six, six yards of carry? Yeah, that's... You know, you're going to live with that. You know, Brandon Williams was 5 for 46. That's 8.8 .8 yards of carry. And Kenny, Kenny scrambled and did all right, put James White in there. He was 
two for 12, so he was six yards of carry. So the backs uh, were, were effective uh, in running the ball. All right, Coach, thank you. All right, thank you.